It's 8 o'clock on a snowy March morning in 2008. I'm alone in my cell, sitting on a bare mattress and staring at the three cardboard boxes piled in front of me. The entire contents of my life inside them. Butterflies beat fiercely in my stomach. Excitement. Fear. And then the moment that I've been waiting for finally arrives as the loudspeakers crackle. Spencer, please report to receiving and release. I was 19 years old as I walked out the prison gates that day, and I swore that I would never come back. Armed with a few cardboard boxes, I set out to build a successful life. Now, the first few years went okay. I stayed out of trouble, for the most part. I survived. But when the storms of life rained down, I found myself utterly ill-equipped to navigate them. My wife nearly died during brain surgery, shortly before I lost my job. After several months of her slow, painful recovery and no job prospects, I tried to seek shelter from the storm by using and selling drugs. Not my best moments. I armed myself with drugs and a gun. As a result, I find myself back on the inside of these walls, my life reduced to these three cardboard boxes for the second time. Now, I've heard of downsizing, but I think this is a bit extreme. <laughs> Can you imagine cramming your life into a few of these things? It's not easy. Unfortunately, my story isn't unique. The driving force behind what got me here is a strikingly common equation that I've come to refer to as the PDC effect. Poverty plus desperation equals crime. Now, all too often, this spirals into a vicious cycle of incarceration, incarceration, perpetuated because society arms prisoners with years of stagnation, a few cardboard boxes, and little else. Yet, we're expected to succeed when we get out. Hmm. I was out walking the track the other day, and I overheard a fellow prisoner telling his friend how this is his sixth time in prison. Man, that struck me like a freight train. Several laps later, something else struck me. His situation isn't so different from my own. We both got out and came back. Nor is it so different from the situation that hundreds of thousands of others find themselves in. According to the Pew Center on the State's 2011 report, nearly 45% of people released from prison return nationwide. I hate to point out the obvious, but these failures touch all of your lives in a major way. Nearly half of the people released to your neighborhoods are committing crimes, victimizing you. The question then becomes, why are so many of us failing? It's because we don't have the skills to succeed in society. We've got to be able to overcome that PDC effect, which means we need to be able to earn a decent living to support our families as well as think critically and problem solve when life's challenges arise, as we all know that they will. Now, of course, we can only gain these things through individual hard work, but the opportunities must exist before we can take advantage of them. And the single most effective way to create these opportunities is through higher education. I know, I see those looks, and I get where you're coming from. Prisoners deserve to be punished, don't we? Yeah. Absolutely. But shouldn't we also have the opportunity to become productive members of our communities while we pay our debts to society? Should we? Now, the key word there is productive. We all know that entering the job market is challenging. Let me get a quick show of hands. Who's ever had a difficult time finding a good job? Right? Now, just imagine trying to find one as a felon. I gotta tell you, showing up at a job interview with felonies on your record is like walking into the prom in a clown suit and trying to leave with a date. You are definitely at a disadvantage. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy and corny, but you guys are gonna have to take my word for it, because I've tried both. Neither one of them works very well. <laughs> now, when I stepped off the bus here at Washington State Reformatory, I knew that I had to make some serious changes. The PDC effect had won that first round. I was determined to win the second. I simply had to find a new equation. So I started searching, 
and I found University Beyond Bars. University Beyond Bars is a nonprofit organization that offers college level learning at this prison. In my two years here, that program has taken me a good distance toward my associate's degree, equipping me with knowledge and skills for success. The things that I've learned will enable me to get that good job, in spite of the felon clown suit that I wear to the interview. And they'll enable me to stay out of prison. That's something that I learned while I was doing a bunch of research on higher education for one of my classes. And one of the things that I read sticks out in my memory in particular. It was the Journal for Correctional Education from December 2010, Volume 61, Issue 4. I will never forget it. It was analyzing studies done on higher education inside prisons. And it found that a two-year degree, just two years of education, cut recidivism to almost 13%. A four-year degree cut it to almost 5%. And a graduate degree cut it to essentially nothing. And that is when I realized I had found my new equation, EOS, education plus opportunity equals success. Now that's copyright pending, everybody. <laughs> copyright pending. I saw that look back there. PDC doesn't have to be the whole story. The EOS equation is powerful and can go a long way in solving the problem. It's helping to solve mine right now. University Beyond Bars has made a great start with an incredible idea. And they're not the only ones. Others have also recognized the enormous benefit of higher education in prison, creating programs like the Prison University Project out of California and the Bard Prison Initiative out of New York. But these programs are scarce. Now, what if we take this idea that has given me and many others so much, grow it to maturity, and spread it to prisons everywhere? Imagine how many lives can be transformed if we build a rigorous voluntary college program that utilizes technology and hybrid learning to deliver top quality education, one that has an academic pathway that offers degrees, as well as a vocational pathway that offers specialized trades and skills, complete with industry certification in areas like computer programming or web design. The EOS equation can change countless lives for the better for prisoners, and for those that have never stepped foot inside of a prison by virtue of our success. Now, making this a reality on a large scale is going to take dedication and commitment from prisoners and from the community. But the biggest thing that we need is your support. So please, everybody watching, make your voices heard. Talk about it to your friends, your family, your neighbors. Tweet about it. Post it on your Facebook. Write about it in your blog. When you do, ask this question. Who do we want living in our neighborhoods? People that are armed with boxes and stagnation or equipped with skills and education? And to preempt the most common objection to prison education, cost, I encourage you to share something else that I learned in my studies. A four-year college degree from the University of Washington costs almost the same as one year of incarceration in a prison like this one. This became clear to me while I was comparing the 2011 tuition with the 2011 fiscal year reports from the Department of Corrections. And it blew me away. I mean, think about it. Prisoners can be equipped with a bachelor's degree worth of life skills for essentially what it costs to warehouse us for a single year. That's some powerful food for thought. I'd like to take a step back and look beyond these numbers. I'm here having this conversation because I've experienced firsthand the power of education to transform. When I got out of prison the first time, I didn't have any life skills. I couldn't see past my own desperate little world. So when life storms hit, really poor decisions were born from that blind perspective. Fast forward several years to today, and I'm proud to be able to say that the man standing before you is miles ahead of who I was on that snowy March morning. My perspective has enlarged significantly. No longer do I see life's challenges as catastrophic causes for desperation, but as beautiful opportunities for growth and enrichment. The future is a beautiful place, a place where I'm able to provide well for my family, 
pursuing my passions for business as a respected member of our community, a place where I never again have to downsize my life to a few cardboard boxes. Now, this significant transformation is made possible by the journey that is education. As that journey continues, I'm equipped with more of life's tools, tools that enable me to build that successful and contributory life that I envision on the outside of these walls. Now, that is extremely important. The vast majority of us prisoners will be released at some point. In fact, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics' most recent numbers, over 3.5 million people were released from prison in the United States. And that's just between 2008 and 2012. 3.8 million people. That's a lot of neighbors. Look around you. Many of the men seated next to you will be those neighbors. I will be one of those neighbors. And so again, I have to ask you, who do you want to live next to? The old Spencer, armed with a few cardboard boxes, headed straight for PDC, poverty, desperation, crime. It's not a very good neighbor. Or the new Spencer, well equipped with EOS, education, opportunity, success. That's somebody people can be proud to live next to. I leave it with you. Thank you.